Hi, I'm Matt from ArcESB, and welcome to our video series on data mapping, where I cover all of the features of the XML map connector. This is the second video of the series, and I'll be talking about the expression editor, which you can use to manipulate and transform data as you're mapping it. For more information on mapping basics, please check out the first video in the series. And for information on how to set up a data transformation flow, please check out our mapping overview video. The expression editor allows you to build an expression that formats, transforms, or manipulates data during the mapping. In this video, I'll focus on the two main features of the expression editor, adding dynamic content and formatters. We'll start with adding dynamic content, since it's closely related to what we covered in the previous video. First, let's go ahead and drag and drop to create a basic value-to-value -value mapping. And now we can click on the tablet and pencil icon to bring up the expression editor. Let's take a moment to understand this XPath syntax that resulted from our drag and drop mapping. These square brackets indicate that a variable or a function is being resolved rather than a literal string. This XPath function is returning a value from the input document, namely the value at the XPath specified by this green XPath parameter. As you might recall from the previous video, since this XPath does not begin with a slash, it is relative to a for each loop XPath further up in the mapping. This process of reading values from the input document is what we mean by adding dynamic content, and we can use the expression editor for more granular control. So let's say that I wanted this output element to contain the values from two different source elements. Well, I can add the second source element from the dynamic content list here. First, I'll add a new set of square brackets, since I'm resolving a new function, and then I can simply click on the source element here in the list that I want to add to the mapping. Anything that I add outside of the square brackets will be interpreted as literal characters. So for example, I could separate the values with a comma and a space, like this. So most of the time you'll add dynamic content with a simple drag and drop approach, but the expression editor provides additional flexibility if you need it. Formatters are the second major feature of the expression editor. These are essentially functions that manipulate the value as it's being mapped. Let's start with a couple of string formatter examples, then we'll go into a math formatter example. First, let's say that the source value I'm mapping might be multiple words separated by spaces, and I just want the first word. You could imagine this is like a first name space last name. Well, I know I can split out the first word with the split formatter, so let's see what that would look like. I'll start by simply mapping my source value, like usual. Now I can click on the tablet and pencil to bring up the expression editor and add the formatter. Values are piped in to formatters using the vertical pipe character, so I'll go ahead and add one here. Note that I'm staying within the square brackets because this is a function expression, not literal characters. On the right side of the pipe, I'll add the split formatter. So to do that, I'll go to the formatters list and search for split. Then once I've found it, I can just click on the formatter to add it to the expression. Now I need to add the parameters of the split. The first parameter is the delimiter, or the character to split the string around. So in this case, that's the space character. I'll go ahead and specify that, surrounded by single quotes. The second parameter is the index of the resulting set of strings that I actually want to return. Well, formatters are one indexed, and I want the first word, so I'll pass in the number one. OK, so now we have a string formatter manipulating the value from the source document as it's being mapped. Formatters can also be chained together. So for example, let's say I not only wanted the first word, but I also wanted to ensure that the first word is all uppercase. Well, I know I can use the to upper formatter to accomplish this. So I can add another vertical pipe to the expression, and then once again search the formatters list, this time for the to upper formatter, and click it to add it here at the end. I could chain any number of formatters together with this repeated vertical pipe syntax. OK, so those were two string formatters, but now let's take an example of a math formatter. Let's say that my source document has the price and the quantity of a line item, but I want to multiply them together in my mapping to find the total cost. Well, I can do that with the multiply formatter in the expression editor, so let's see what that would look like. I'll start by simply mapping one of the values I want to multiply, and in this case we'll choose the price, with the usual drag and drop approach. Now I can open up the expression editor, and once again I'll start by adding a vertical pipe here to pipe the value into a new formatter. Now I'll go to the formatters list and search for multiply. Once I've found it, I click on it to add it to the expression, and now I need to add the parameters of the multiply formatter. The parameter of the multiply formatter is the other value that I want to multiply together. So in this case, it needs to be the quantity value from the source document. 
So first I'll add a new set of square brackets, since this is a new variable to resolve. Then I'll go back to the dynamic content list from before, so I can select the element that I know corresponds to the quantity of the line item. Once I've found it, I can simply click it to add it to the expression, and now the expression correctly multiplies the price with the quantity and returns the result in the output element. And that covers the two main features of the expression editor, formatters and dynamic content. Naturally, there are many more formatters than the examples I provided here, so please check out our documentation to see the full list of formatters that are available. The next video in this series will discuss how to add conditional logic to your mapping. Thanks for watching, and as always, you can find more resources and even a free trial of the application at archeusb.com.